Today on the Railway Room, it's Phase 1, Part 1 of my new build 009 model railway. Hello friends, welcome to the Railway Room. So today, it's quite exciting, it's the first part of my new build 009 model railway. So that's Phase 1, Part 1. Uh, so what can you expect from this video? Well, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about the plan, the basic concept of what I'm hoping that the railway is going to become. And then I'm going to get started building it, I'm going to put the track down, install the points with mechanical point operation, I'm going to be wiring up for DC, so I'm going to be building a switch panel, and then I'm going to be running the first test trains at the end of the video, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, that's enough preamble, so let's get on uh, and talk about the plan. Okay, so what I'm hoping to build is the real fourth Coinant of the Reich, the Dragon's Gorge Railway, which is a fictional narrow gauge railway uh, in the preservation era set in the top left hand corner of Wales. Uh, now I have come up with a, an entire fictional history, a backstory of the railway that the layout is going to be based on. Uh, I'm not going to go into that now because it's quite long. Uh, it is on the website so if you are interested you can check that out. Um, it's all a little bit kind of up in the air, it'll probably be uh, subject to changes and amendments as I progress things, add more details, tweak some things, but uh, essentially I've done that there, which hopefully is uh, going to help while I'm building, because uh, that gives me an idea of what I'm building towards, and uh, knowing the history of the stations that I'm building allow me to build more details into the model, uh, instead of just yeah, making it up as I go along. Um, so that's on the website if you want to know. Um, this is going to be a shelf layout running around the edge of the room uh, with multiple stations. Um, so hopefully it's going to allow me to run trains from somewhere to somewhere else um, and provide a bit more operational interest for me when I've actually got it built and uh, can start running the trains. Uh, now instead of having a continuous scenery around the, the line, what I'm actually going to go for is a phased build, so it's going to be a series of scenically distinct boards which are then going to link together to form a continuous run. Uh, now there's a couple of advantages to doing this. For one thing, if it's continuous scenery I might wind up with two stations that are in scale terms maybe less than 100 metres apart from each other, which doesn't really make sense, whereas if the trains come off scene and then on scene further up it makes it feel like those stations are further apart than they actually physically are on the model. Uh, so hopefully it will make it seem like the trains have travelled further than they actually have. Uh, it will also allow me to have more variety of scenery, scenery, so each section will be quite scenically distinct and have its own little character uh, for different er areas on the line. Um, probably the biggest advantage is that it means that I can uh, go for a phased construction rather than trying to build the whole thing all in one go, I can just concentrate building one board at a time. Um, and a really great thing about this is that that effectively mirrors the journey of the preserved line, because I'm, I am modelling a preserved line, which might start build, rebuilding a short section of the line and then slowly extend rebuilding more of the original railway. And that's pretty much exactly what I'm going to be doing with the model, is starting on a short line and then extending it further around. So it's, it's actually quite a prototypical way to build a model of a preserved line, which uh, is pretty cool. Um, it also means that I've got a lot of flexibility if I need to move house. Obviously a shelf layer like this is built around the shape of the room that it's in, so if I need to move to a different room, then if I've built the whole thing in one go, I've kind of got to take it all apart and start again. Whereas if they're individual boards, there's going to be shorter linking boards in between them, which they can be then rearranged and reconfigured uh, to allow the layout to fit into a different sized room. And at the end of the day, if ultimately I can't reconfigure the whole thing, I can just... I only need to take apart one board rather than the whole thing. Um, so there's, there's a lot more flexibility uh, building that way. 
um, which is probably the biggest advantage I would say uh, of this type of build. Um, so so let's quickly talk about the, 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 the layout initially uh, as I plan to see it. So the plan then, I've just uh, loosely placed some uh, old bits of track down to give a basic uh, idea of the concept. This board here is going to be the lower station, the terminus of the railway and it's roughly similar track uh, layout to Dolgarrog the, the station uh, because I felt that that actually worked very well uh, from an operational standpoint um, even if the, uh, the execution, the wiring and everything wasn't particularly great. Uh, the one big difference really is that in Dolgarrog the the uh, loop lines just end one head shunt, um, which was then limited in the length for the uh, how long the locos could be. So on this time I'm going to put the extra set of points in so that both platforms are going to have head shunts. And that'll give me this side where it's going to allow me to run a longer loco off the end. Just like Dog Oak, um, we're going to have run around route two main loops and uh, one bay platform and then coming through to if we can see the engine shed and leaving the station the line's going to run between the, end, the shed and a building which I'm probably going to put a pub there I think um, something kind of reminiscent of uh, Welsh pool and parts of uh, uh, the chorus uh, where the line really snakes next to the buildings uh, the line will go across a level crossing here and then curve around and behind a church and disappear off get into the trees behind the church um, off scene and so the uh, the station because it's such a large flat area basically is going to be a standard board uh, flat top once we leave the station we're then going to move into open top uh, baseboards can be open framed uh, so obviously I haven't cut the uh, the uh, baseboard uh, where the uh, tracks are going to go for these yet. So I'm going to run in here and then this next section is going to be a short fiddle yard section with no uh, actual uh, scenery on so that's where I'm going to be uh, taking the trains on and off scene. Now that's going to be roughly representative of somewhere like uh, Boston Lodge say um, so that it's beyond the uh, main station um, and where most of the, the trains will start and end the day and in the sheds. Okay, so I'm going to start the uh, track laying with the points. They're the uh, tricky bits to get in at exactly the right places. I've decided this is where I want this point to go. So I'm going to roughly mark on, hopefully, where the, uh, the end of the point blades go and also the V. So this is so that I can then know where to drill holes through um, in order to uh, get wires coming through because I need wires for the uh, polarity switch of the points here. I'm also going to be using wiring tube to control the points so I'm going to need holes through potentially. Although with this one I might just take it directly above the board, I haven't decided yet. Squeeze through. Lovely job. And I was hoping I'm going to connect the f uh, frog to either of these two rails. I'm just going to need a couple of holes by these rails. Okay, so let's see if we can get this first pair of points installed. Now, I want to have manual control over the points rather than using point motors, uh, but not the uh, finger from the sky, which is how the points were operated on Dolgarrog V. So I'm going to go for a variety on the wire and tube method. Uh, and the wire will be connected at one end to the uh, points and at the other end to a single pole double throw switch. And the switch can therefore also be used to control the polarity of the frog. 
My plan, however, is to mount the switch on the underneath of the board and then use a rod through the fascia to control the switch and by extension the points and the flow parity. Okay, so what I've got is these uh, short dowel rods. Uh, they're only 20 centimeters long, these ones that I've picked up. Uh, that's because this board is only a foot wide, so these are plenty long enough to get as far enough across to be able to get the points, okay? Uh, obviously, if you're using a wider board, you might need uh, longer rods, but th this is uh, ideal for this. And you can just about see there, I've drilled two holes near the end of this rod so one will be connected to the switch for the flop for the polarity switching the other one will be connected to the wiring tube to the actual point blades and this is my switch as uh, a single pole double throw i don't know if you can see that because it's all black uh, but i've drilled a hole into the end of the switch there okay so what i've done is i've just put a, a short nail through the dowel and into the end of the point and a bit of a uh, PVA wood glue to uh, hold in there. It's not dry yet but uh, you can see uh, how that's going to go. Lined up almost directly with the point you can see I've drilled a hole there which is just the, uh, the right size for the dowel so that's going to need to go about there. Uh, if you look I've got quite a bit of uh, dowel sticking out the end so I can uh, trim that down a bit and if I roughly hold the, the switch in the position where it's going to be, you can see as I pull in the roller, it's changing the points. So theoretically that's sound. I'm just going to mark off where that point is. Um, and then I'm going to need to uh, fasten that point down. Okay, so my first hole wasn't in quite the right place, it turns out. So um, good thing to learn. Wait until you've got things exactly where you're going to have them before you're messing around drilling holes make sure you've uh, got them in definitely the right place so i've got a little hole here right next to the hole in the uh, the rod on the point blade so i just need to then slide the wire in the tube through this hole and hopefully without losing it and hook that end of the wire through the control through the uh, point there and then I'm just going to very lightly glue that into position on the point okay so I've got the uh, wire glued into position on the, uh, the point rod there uh, now the original idea I was going to put the, uh, the wire through through the hole uh, in the rod, uh, but because of the angle I was coming out, I wasn't entirely practical, so I wound up just turning it around the end. Uh, I also had to drill a new hole because the one that I'd used was a little bit too close, and so that was going to be quite a tight angle. It needs to be a little bit further away to be able to pull it through without having a, a sudden right angle which the, the wire is not going to be able to uh, operate through that so you can quite see i've got the uh, the wire glued onto the end of the uh, the point there i just put a little bit of the uh, polyfiller over on to hold the wire the uh, plastic tube firmly into position so that it doesn't move uh, because any uh, leeway in that moving is going to affect the throw of the point uh, obviously i'll paint that over so it won't be quite so obvious and if we look underneath where we're at now, um, I've just temporarily put some of these uh, connectors in to uh, hook the wires together. And again, you can see I've got the wire coming out of the tube and through the hole in the rod here, and that's glued into place both ends. And when I move the rod, you might be able to just see the wire moving there and the uh, switch is moving. If most excitingly, if we look at the <laughs> moving that is successfully moving the point blades across. So that seems to be working. Big sigh of relief. Um, I've just temporarily put some uh, bits of old track 
either side of the point so the uh, engine's got somewhere to run off to. Grabbed an engine. So I've gone with Jenny, the old uh, Kerr Stewart tank. Uh, it's a, on the Fleischmann chassis, that's a, a good, uh, reliable runner. So hopefully it shouldn't give me any problems. But it's also a relatively short wheelbase, so maybe if there's uh, issues over the points, we'll see. So, got it wired up to the old controller. I'm not sure which direction it's going to go, so I'm just going to put my hand <laughs> at the back to make sure I don't lose it. And hopefully, this is going to be the first locomotive moving on the new layout. Let's see if it works. Oh, I'm turning it the wrong way. Just going to adjust that. So the, uh, the old track that I've used on this side is actually really filthy. So I'm just going to pause and give that a good clean up before uh, I carry on with the experimentations. Okay, so I've just given the, the, this old bit of track a bit of a clean. Uh, I don't know if you can see on there, this bit is really nice and shiny. This bit that's not been cleaned is filthy. So hopefully that will mean that I won't uh, have the engine disappear off the end. So let's give it another whirl. There we go, let's run in very nicely, thank you. And now the moment of truth. Change the points. So smooth. And there we go. And let's just change the points against it. Go. No, it's not working. It's not going to work. And if I change the points back the right way. Ha <laughs> yeah. Changing the points, changing the points, changing the points. Oh, change the points and it stops. Go, stop. Go, stop. Go. Hey, I am so happy it actually works. Brilliant. So, good news, good news. Okay, so, jobs are good uh, Now I'm just going to take these uh, temporary bits of track up and then I can uh, start putting the rest of the track down and uh, getting the, uh, the other four points in the station installed. So what I've done is I've gone through and got all the track down and got all of my uh, Point controls installed. Uh, so I don't know whether you, you can see the point blades on there or not, but uh, these are all working as intended for now at least. <laughs> right, so if you compare the first one that I did with the uh, two new ones, you can see this subtle difference. And so the most obvious thing from the outside is this one, the original, is in a hole directly underneath the uh, top of the board, whereas these ones is about a centimetre further down. And the reason for that, if we look underneath, you can see what's going on. So with the original, the nail has gone through the end of the uh, switch uh, and into it. Uh, the potential issue that that might cause is that the nail is long enough that it could reach the inside of the switch and potentially cause issues with it working. 
So I, I wanted to avoid that with the new ones. So that's why I've moved the control rod a little bit further away down from the board so that the nail can in fact go through the side of the switch. So this, these control rods are pretty much on top or underneath the, uh, the switch with the screw, the nail going through the side. The issue that that's caused me, because nothing is ever without issues, is it? Is that obviously that then means that the control wire, the wire in the tube that actually controls the movement of the point blade, is further away from the board. With this one, it's it's nice and close, so there's very little movement. With this one, it's because it's about a centimeter differential away from the board. I can't just glue it to the board and and have it working. So for it to get that height difference, I need to make sure that the tube can't move. It needs to be firmly solid against the board uh, because if there's any play in that, all the movement of the rod is just going to go in straight into the, uh, the tube and it's not going to move the wire and move the point blade. So the solution, which may or may not come back to bite me later on, time will tell, um, what I've come up with is I've wrapped the uh, tube in polyfill. So this one, uh, I've managed to get the uh, control rod nice and close to the, uh, the uh, hole for the wire for the point blade. So uh, there's only a small amount there. And this one kind of really drilled the uh, hole in slightly the wrong place. So I've had to get quite a longer run of wire in that. It's, it's still uh, a pretty short length. Um, in the scheme of things, so it's uh, fine for it to not work, but obviously I've had to have quite a bit of polyfill in there to hold that tube in place so that when the uh, control rod moves, it moves the wire and let's see if I can get uh, this engine running again. Fingers crossed. Right. I haven't tried this uh, off camera yet, so this might work, it might not. Runs backwards. Don't want to go that way, it will fall off the board. Good. And let's run back. Change point. Ooh. Don't know which way I'm going. Ah. Now I would appear to have mushed my wire up somewhere. Ah, no. It's the point on this end. I haven't changed. Okay, so I've been through and checked all the wires, all the connectors, and I've discovered the issue was with some of these uh, little temporary connectors that I'd put in at the bottom, which were not making the connections uh, between the wires that they should be. Uh, thankfully, all the uh, the wires connecting to the rails themselves were all making good connections, so uh, that's a positive at least. Uh, I figured the best thing to do, instead of messing around with uh, these temp making temporary connections to see if it works, creating issues that don't really need to be there. I'll just go ahead uh, with the wiring final and for that I'm going to be using some of these uh, chocolate box connectors to connect my wires instead of these uh, little clip ones. Uh, but in order to do the wiring I need to wire in these switches that I've got for the isolating sections. And to do that 
I need somewhere to mount these switches because there's no space on the board itself. So I therefore bought one of these, which is a little kit to make a, uh, a switch panel uh, off the front of the board. Uh, th to be honest, this kit is really kind of overkill for what I need it for. It's going to be maybe five um, isolating switches on it, and that's about it. Um, when I bought this kit, I was in imagining that I was going to have the uh, point switches on it as well. But what I didn't take into account is that the uh, front panel screws in and then pulls out for ease of maintenance uh, inside. And obviously that requires a degree of slack in the wires that you can't have with the wire and tube system for controlling the points. So this would be great for having the uh, point control if you're using point motors. Uh, but it, it, it's not really suitable for uh, the wire and tube method that I'm using, which is why I've uh, gone with the uh, dowel rods underneath the board instead. So uh, this kit I bought uh, came from uh, eBay from a company called Flexgenix. Uh, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I paid for this out of my own money. Um, hopefully I'm going to be a uh, satisfied customer. Uh, I guess we'll find out how satisfied I'm going to be quite soon when I build it. Um, it seems like a, a, a pretty nice little kit, all the bits that I'm expecting in there. And there's a sheet of instructions, and I just need a bit of wood glue and a trusty hammer. So let's have a go. I'm not entirely sure if it matters which way around I'm going to do this. So, yeah, that matches up. Just going to need to put a bit of the old wood glue. And it might not even need to glue these pieces, uh, do seem to fit together very tightly indeed. So. probably do is run a little glue down the uh, the inside of the joint there as well to seal it. But I'll probably do that after I've put all of the uh, the four sides on. coming on nicely. And again, as I said before, I'm just going to run glue around all the joints on the inside just to seal that. Now this is uh, just a, a basic uh, version of these. They actually do uh, engraved uh, tops as well as things. Uh, a bunch of different sizes. You can also, if you see the picture in there, they will engrave your track plan and, and things on it as well. They were uh, lots of custom stuff. Um, I've just gone for a basic one because it's good enough for me. It does what I need it to do. This fits one way only. <coughs> And it says on it, top side front. So I'm assuming that's that way. Presumably the text is outside. But once you screw the front in, it's going to be hidden anyway. So that's all good. Um, it's a little bit um, irritating. I've got this uh, advert for the company on the front of that. Uh, I guess I could probably... Uh, I built that the other way around so that that was on the inside if I didn't want it showing, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter, it's all good. Uh, so let's bob the, uh, the, uh, the last piece on here. So 
so there we are all good just need to wait for the uh, glue to dry on that okay so I've attached the switch box to the uh, front of the board here and I've drilled through a series of holes they also go through the front of the panel uh, I should be able to fit a couple of uh, these wires through there so I can get the switch in the front and this is the front of the top of the uh, switch panel and I've just printed out on there a rough track plan, uh, something similar to what you might find in a signal box, uh, so I can mark out where uh, my uh, isolating points and the switches for those are going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out where I want my uh, switches to appear on the track plan, and then I'm just going to use a knife to mark through, hopefully, where the holes are going to be. Hopefully, when I take this off, it's just going to be able to roughly see where these are, so I know where to drill. Quickly uh, sand the top of these off so it's nice and uh, smooth. Alrighty, so I've got my final printout of the uh, track plan. Just going to lightly put that in position. Okay, good. And then on the reverse, if I can find my pen, just going to. Roughly mark out where these holes are. And then uh, whoop, take it off and uh, just cut out those holes. And then I'll glue this into position. Okay, so what I've done is I just lightly glued the uh, track diagram into place and then I laminated it with just strips of uh, sticky tape um, just to protect it. And then I've basically just been poking through the holes and screwing the switches into place. So to show you, well that is a switch. And then I just need to puncture a little hole in the tape and the lamination. That hole's kind of not quite in the right place because it's gone through the text there, but I uh, can't really move the, uh, the hole now, so it'll do. And i um, just going to make sure that all the wires on the back are the same way around, otherwise that's going to be really confusing. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way, so I've just made sure all of the, uh, the wired contacts are on the top side, so that's going to be on position. And then just okay, push that down, and then just screw the switch into position. Pop the cap on the top. And all of my switches are good to go. Okay, so this is just going to slide into place, just like that. Lovely jubbly. Okay, so here we are, the moment of truth. I have hopefully done all the wiring underneath here. It's a, a bit of a mess at the moment, um, but once I've found out and made sure that it's all working, I will tidy these cables up a bit. Um, one thing that I have done, you might be able to see under here, is I've just used a short length of track glued to the underside of the baseboard. Uh, to connect to the uh, main wires from the controller um, so that I can then run 
wires off that uh, to all the different isolating sections and through the switches. Uh, it just seemed like a, a, an easy way to do that. Um, obviously using old track from the old layout I had to make sure that was very clean uh, before doing that, otherwise that will mess the uh, connections up. So, hopefully this is going to work. Um, if not, this is going to be a bit embarrassing. So let's grab the controller, plug it in, and get the trusty little engine. And then see if we can work out if she's going to run anywhere. So first I'm going to try taking it down to platform one. I think that way. So let's see if it does. Oh, it's moving. There we go. Okay, so and we're going to run down into the head shunt. And then I've got a switch here to hopefully isolate. So, yeah, that's not working. And I'm just going to swap the direction, check the switch, and off she goes. And now let's try running into platform two. So, if I just Pull that point over, that one set straight. Direction. There we go. Whoosh! Straight down into the head shunt. So, again, that's going to be this isolating switch. So, bump, stops dead. Sort the direction. And that's good. And again, this is on the main switch, so that works correctly. Change that point and this point, and the crescent. Okay, and it's not working, and that's because in order to use the crossing at this end, I have to change the points at the other end of the loop as well to allow it to run through. Yep, yeah, and as soon as I change those points, off she goes. into the main platform and again this has its own switch bump stops dead so the direction yep all good um, so let's check this point running into the uh, the shed line so change that so the isolation yeah runs still isolated and I've got two isolating sections down here so these two switches are going to isolate at different points in here. So the, that's the first one. And that's the second one. And I'll change the direction before moving again. Bump. Great. And the last one to check is going to be right down at the head shunt at the end of the pay platform. And boom! That works. Great, so... <sighs> yes! It all seems to be working, which is amazing. Uh, and I think that's a pretty good place to uh, leave this first video. This is a very odd angle of a shot. Um, but just to see you out, I'm just going to test it with some <laughs> other, making sure this engine doesn't disappear. Uh, I'm just going to test it with a couple of other trains around, put some old buildings on, um, just check it's working exactly as I, as I want to. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy these uh, bits of trains running now. And uh, looking forward to uh, episode two. Sweet. Thank you.